Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to do a fermentation crock comparison and talk about which type of fermentation crock I like the best. So once again, this is not a sponsored video in any way. I bought these crocs with my own money and I just wanted to share my thoughts and experience. And also you might be wondering in the beginning of this video, why would you use a fermentation crock? And why would you choose such a big container when you can also ferment food in jars on your countertop? Well, the main reason is their size. You can fit larger amounts of fermented food. You can fit bigger pieces of fermented food and like whole cabbages even if you wanted to go that route so it gives you some flexibility that way. One of the reasons that I like using a fermentation crock is because of the amount of fermented food that you can make in one spot. It's not a terribly hard thing to do but it is it's just one more thing to do and I find that it's very efficient for something like sauerkraut that we eat a lot of to be able to make a huge five gallon amount in one sitting and then have enough for quite a long time. So I have two different styles of fermentation crocks here. I have an open one, and then I have a water sealed one. Let's go over some pros and cons of both of these different designs. So for the open top one, some of the positives for this design are that they're easy to find. You can get them even from places like Ace Hardware, or you might even be able to find one that somebody had and doesn't want anymore. So they're, they're easier to find. They're easy to work with because they're a very simple design, easy to put things in and take them out, easy to clean. Downsides to this are that it's an open top one, so it's a lot harder to keep different things from getting into it. It has you know, all the exposure to outside air, so you might have more trouble with mold or calm yeast growing in it. If you keep everything submerged, in my experience, mold is usually not an issue. Also, if your salt amount is correct, then usually it's not an issue, but it can be more of a problem. It's more likely to happen in an open top crock. That being said, I have used this particular crock for quite a number of years and I've always been able to make a really good successful batch of sauerkraut in it. I do usually have trouble with the calm yeast growing on it and if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's just a harmless white yeast that forms on the top of fermented food sometimes. It will affect the texture and the taste of food if you leave it on there. So I always like to scrape it off if I see it forming because I want to, you know, avoid it even though it's not harmful. I just don't want that taste and texture that it tends to leave. So I did deal with that a lot. This year I'm going to be fermenting in this water seal crock, which I'm really excited about. So we'll talk about the pros and cons of, for this design. So the positives for a water seal crock are that it has this lid with a rim around it and you put water in this little lower area here and then the lid sits in the water. That way gases can escape but no outside air can come in. So you have much less of a chance of mold and calm yeast and everything growing in there. You also don't have to worry about fruit flies or anything like that getting in there like you kind of do with this one. Another benefit to this particular design is that it actually comes with fermentation weights, which is very handy. For the open crock, it does not come with its own weights, so you'd have to find something else that works. I always use like a dinner plate weighed down with a very heavy rock or something in the other crock, but it's nice to have specific fermentation weights that are designed for the crock, so that's another bonus of this one. Some downsides to this one is that they are more expensive than the open top one. They are also a little harder to find. I had to look around online quite a bit to find one, especially in the size that I wanted. I'm going to leave links below to both of these designs and also if you don't want a giant five gallon one like I do, they come in different sizes too, different smaller sizes as well, which is nice. Another downside to this one that could potentially be a problem is that it's a little bit harder to get food in and out of and a little bit harder to clean since it has this lip edge. It's not just a straight up and down edge like this one. So just some things to keep in mind and consider if you're thinking about buying a crock. Now let's talk about some other things that you want to take into consideration if you are in the market for a fermentation crock. 
you'll want to again compare the pros and cons to these two different designs like I just talked about and see which might fit your needs better. This one is absolutely usable just if you want to have that extra insurance against the mold and fruit flies and calm yeast and stuff then you might be happier with the water seal lid. If you're following the GAPS diet I do recommend this type of design with the lid just because you want to try to keep those yeasts and different things from growing in there as much as you can. And you'll also want to think about size. You'll want to think how much sauerkraut do I need to go through, how many people are in your family, how much do you eat at a time. You'll want to make sure that it's something that you can lift if you need to carry it around. So just really think about the size and capacity, the amount of food that you want, how often you want to be making a batch, those kind of things. Do you have a place in your house where you can keep a bigger size like this or would you prefer a small one that would sit on your counter? All those different things. Pretty soon I'm going to do another video where I actually make a batch of sauerkraut to go into this crock so you'll get to see my whole routine of cleaning it, preparing the sauerkraut and fermenting in it and then I'll try to show you the process as it starts fermenting and what all that looks like. So stay tuned and watch for that. And if you're watching this video in the future, then that will already be on my channel and you can go check that out. If you have ideas for things that you would like me to make videos on, then go ahead and leave me a comment below. I always love getting requests. So hopefully you found that useful, just hearing some of the pros and cons for these two different designs. I know that when I was first looking into fermentation crocs, I didn't even know that a design like this existed. I only knew about this kind. So hopefully this helps you realize that there's different ways of doing this and different things that you can use, different tools, and hopefully found it helpful. I have other fermenting videos where I show how to make sauerkraut in a jar and how to make pickles as well as fermented zucchini relish. There will be links in the description box to those. I'll have links to these crocs where I found them where you can buy them online in the description box below so you can check that out if you're in the market for one. Also leave me a comment and let me know if you have ever used a fermentation croc and what your experience was like. Also let me know if you have any questions. I'll have a link down below also to my blog post which is a full written version of this the same comparison of crocs with links and pictures and all that. Also in my blog I have my free member exclusive password protected subscriber library where all my free ebooks and printables, checklists, all those goodies are in one spot so there will be a link below where you can get access to that if you'd like. Okay, if you like this video and found it interesting or helpful at all, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would like to see it. Here on my channel I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.